Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. I hope everybody's in the mood for a little TV talk. I'm going to be talking about a show called Legend of the Seeker. Legend of the Seeker is based on a book series and novels by Terry Goodkind. The show came out 2009, 2010. Oh no, 2008. At the time, I think I was somewhat familiar with the books. Not sure how deep I was into them. I think I got up to like 14 or 16 because the show got me into the books again. It's the uh, Sword of Truth series. By the way, Terry Brooks has the Shannara series and he has the Sword of Truth in there, which is done so much better for its theme of the truth. The Seeker Sword is a little different. Now this is, uh, I guess, created by Sam Raimi and Robert Tappert. They were a duo who did Hercules and Xena, which I was a fan of, but you know what they are. I accepted them for what they were. I think I lean towards Xena being a better show. I remember catching this show and being really impressed by the pilot. Watched it with a friend. We were hooked and we watched every episode and we were anticipating each one. It did give me a reason to get back into the books and I think I got up to about 16. Or so. I think there's maybe 21 books. As an adaption, I don't think it's a great one, although some things are, like they adapted, the cast was great, amazing, but they took story elements, and by the second season, you can see what they were going to do, and it wasn't going to hold to the books as much, which I didn't mind. In my opinion, I think the Game of Thrones TV show is better than the books, uh, Song of Fire and Ice, but. I don't like the books that much. Uh, this looking at, uh, this is almost the same way. I guess, you know, I enjoyed a lot of the books, but they lose their path and a lot of repetitive stuff that, you know, it just doesn't seem to gel together. But that's a, maybe I'll do a book, uh, a book uh, review type um, playlist. That's actually an idea. I had it written down somewhere. But we're talking about Legends of the Seeker. Two seasons, 22 episodes each. If it's not going to adapt it, at least in my opinion, make a good show anyway. And I think they did. Now, what I say objectively, it's a good show. Uh, I don't know if I'm ready to get into that debate. But I really liked it. I thought it was a... Huge step up from Hercules and Xena. The choreography, the, I think it's still shot in New Zealand. But everything got me. Sword and sorcery. I love it in that sense. But then again, I thought I'd love Game of Thrones too, right? I think I got three seasons into Game of Thrones. In, in ex, I don't know if I would call it excitement, but I was interested and I was like, okay. Great characters, great acting, so on and so forth. Here is a show that I don't think got a lot of attention. I don't think the adaption sat well with a lot of people. When I look back at recently, Terry Brooks, uh, I think MTV did the sort of Shannara or doing the uh, Shannara series, and they kind of made the same mistake. You got to go balls deep, huge budget, or at least know where to put your budget the right way. Although I kind of enjoyed the Shannara series, I could see where The Legends of the Seeker didn't hold up for true fans. And, you know, as much as I like the actors in it, I think the cast is great. So much of the storyline is rewritten and cut up and mixed around. I could see a fan of the novels and the books being a little turned off by it, but... It got canceled in the second season. Now, I love the the story, how it starts. Um, there's a lot of world building, but it works. You got 
great characters that portray the uh, actors that portray the characters really good easy to follow but you got this young guy trying to make his way and he's the seeker that has been prophesized and so he gets his sword goes on a quest and i guess where the show was gonna go was try, try to follow the books by season so season one was book one season two would have been book two and again not adapted very closely but following the theme and seeing what they could do within the show i quite enjoyed how they chose to do it i like the progression there's a little bit of training and understanding his emotions go a little off kilter because of the sword and because of his status the bonds that they make even with some villains on the show i thought were done extraordinarily well you're not going to find that connection closely to the books but i could see where they were going i quite enjoyed it as a ride i was disappointed when it was canceled it's rare i'm watching the show and i'm watching it every week i don't know if this is in that category of bad time uh you know there's a lot of shows i talk about sometimes that i wish would stay longer the good guys um but this is an abc studios type thing but it was on i don't know sci-fi or but it tried to get picked up there was actually a what do you call that a fundraiser drive to get the show back it failed but i i would have been proud of it if it was my book and someone took the deadly addiction chronicles and did this i would be proud of it and i wouldn't be um regretting it like i think maybe terry brooks did because i don't know how the movie industry and the tv industry mix and mingle but terry brooks in my opinion is probably one of the best writers of fantasy and it could be epic movies that rivaled lord of the Rings. I could see the choices they made in this show. I could see the um, growth it was getting. So I'm a little surprised. I was a little surprised, I guess, at the time. It's hard to go back when you're a major pothead like I am. But I look back fondly on the show. I've watched it more than once. Uh, I had a friend who um, mom had gotten a series and we'd bring them over and we would watch them on dvd watch all the behind the scenes anything you can get my you can get my hands on and then it got me reinvigorated and got me excited about the books again and i got back in and i got up to like i think uh, like i said 14 16 maybe even 18 but i don't want to you know, i don't know if it's my memory or whatever you got greg horner as richard cypher i thought they nailed it bridget regan as i don't know i said Kaylin just spot on she's gorgeous she invokes the book she could actually do wheel of time stuff uh what is that uh i forgot the name but here's another long series but his books are like 900 pages and fucking words he uses a little crazy uh bruce spence Zedekus, zul zarander amazing actor this guy nails it. i just love his character there were a couple of villains that were turned and i think it's done in the books too there's some cultish uh organization that he inherits by taking out the villain and he's got to eventually show them that he's not the villain well because there's a relationship in the books it's different in the show i think they're half brothers or step brothers and that's the revelation he has to defeat him and they did some interesting things with plots in the episodes some episodes were contained some had a little bit of a little bit of an arc and some were just an over over overall arc of everything coming together i thought they were doing it well but a lot of things the quality doesn't matter sometimes you're watching the show it disappears we all have those shows on a certain list can it get revitalized? Can the theme and the fantasy 
property, intellectual property gets get to another level. I could see it. I could definitely see this. I think there's a what was one of the things I remember about the books growing up that the guy based a lot of the uh, ideology of the books on a certain person like Ian Rand. I can't remember the uh, actual person, but there's a little bit of controversy in the mindset he has is taken from this ideology and in the books it's really uh fleshed out and i guess the i'm trying to recall correctly it was a little too much on the nose as fans would judge it i guess i don't think they brought that to the show though i don't think it had anything to do with the quality of the show Eh. Wish I would plan these things more. I say that a lot sometimes, but hey, what are you going to do? If you're into sword and sorcery, fantasy, is it going to be as deep as Game of Thrones? No, but is it going to be a bridge between what Hercules and Xena brought? And, well, I don't know if you use Game of Thrones, but let's say Game of Thrones. Yeah, it would fall in there. Is it, it gets a little serious, but it has a heart has some dark times, but it's more of a action adventure. And if you want to compare it to things, lots of, you know, supernatural type stuff. Uh, if you want to get a traditional D&D feel, you would get it from this show, Dungeons and Dragons, if anybody's wondering. Medieval feel, I would say. Authentic, you would get more of Game of Thrones. But I, I was impressed with the production in Legends of the Seeker. It looked like they really started up in the game with the choreography. If my memory serves correct, the armor was pretty good. Somewhat uh, paid homage to the book series in a sense. I thought the elements blended well. And I'm going to say that the... Um, what is it? A Mord Sith? I think that's that cult or that organization. Uh, Kara really impressed me. Well, besides being gorgeous, just the transition from a traditional villain who's in in this cult and kind of brainwashed, and uh, she starts seeing the good in the new uh, the Seeker Richard, and it just really is a good arc for her. Lots of good arcs for the characters in the show. I would give that a plus too. And my critique of the show is really, it is not really a good adaption. It doesn't hit the serious notes on on a constant or at least a consistent basis. I think that kind of threw people off. So maybe it's the tone of the show doesn't stay at a certain point. Maybe they're trying different things. Watching it recently. The second season gets a little off the rails, and I think that might have been the uh, an indication. But I thought they took chances. They worked well with me, but it's not going to please production companies and producers and whatever the fuck's going on. Like I said, there's also something about how it was distributed and its source material, you know, I feel bad for Terry Goodkind. Uh, from what I've seen on some interviews, is a terrific author, since I did enjoy most of the series. And it's at that time where things were being adapted, uh, people were grabbing things. Maybe he had a missed opportunity, but he never wanted to sell his work, his, uh, his property or the rights to his stuff. And Sam Raimi was uh, convinced by a friend to read the books. He read them. So I see, I think the show started with good intentions, a, uh, an, a true effort to bring at least the major themes of the books, the novels, uh, which are called the Sword of Truth series, I believe. But Legends of the Seeker is unique enough at the, at the time that it 
distinguished itself from Hercules and Xena and could have had a lot of potential. It could have progressed into a show. You got a novel series that's, um, like I said, I wish I can confirm it, but 21 books. Can I look at that real quick? So that would be interesting to find out and maybe kind of look where was I in that in that um, time frame. Well, they got so many different books because of the way they did the, the prequels. All right, so the first book is 94. Being someone who's heavy into D&D and fantasy novels, a lover of Tolkien. I'm going to guess by the time the show comes out. 2000, he's up to book 13 or so. Yeah, so I remember the Omen Machine. I think 15. All right, so I'm going to say about 15, because I think I, I read the first Confessor. It has a prequel. See, this is messing with my timeline, because I know I read The Old Man Machine. The Third Kingdom I might have read. Severed Souls doesn't sound familiar. Anyway, they could have fleshed out 22 seasons. If you count the prequels, maybe... Well, if you don't count the prequels, let's say they didn't want to... They said, all right, it's too late to do the prequels. We're already in it. Uh, you would take out about three of the books, so... 19 or 20 seasons. This is a gold mine, in my opinion. Especially with the popularity of uh, Game of Thrones. There's also a separate series, I think, for Richard and Kaylin. I quite enjoyed the books, and this is making me think maybe I'll go back and read, or do maybe or do audio books or something. It's got my interest peaked a little bit. I was going through. I finished a couple of series, and I saw this on the site, so I quickly watched uh, the end of season two again. Yeah, so maybe I'll pick up on the books. But this is a TV show kind of review. And I I recommend this to watch. I recommend the books to read if you're interested in the Sword of Truth series. I think the um, show will sit well with a lot of people if, they're, if you're into that to begin with. And I think it's really worked well for general audiences because of the actors, the chemistry, the themes that were woven through pretty well in my opinion with uh love and friendship and sacrifice and the growth of this person's you know powers confidence in himself the sword's magic the uh you know zany uncle who's got magic power and just the world building is pretty good in my opinion i recommend it Go watch Legends of the Seeker. It has two seasons. I'm sure you'll catch it pretty easy on most streaming services. And I hope everybody's doing well. You take care of yourselves. Till next time, take care.